you're telling my followers, all eight of you, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, it's 10. Um, if you're just tuning in, I'm gonna, I am gonna tell you that um, if you wanna know what the weather is gonna be like in Columbus, Georgia on Sunday mornings or Wednesday mornings, it's gonna be humid and maybe raining. But even if it doesn't rain, it will feel like it needs to, okay? Because this is what happens. Yesterday, beautiful day. Last Saturday, gorgeous. Not too hot, not too humid. And then when it comes down that I have to be in front of people for something important, this is what happens. So my hair did not stay from my haircut yesterday. <laughs> and this is riveting information <laughs> that is so part of God's word. <laughs> it is because what? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. The Lord created me created me in this way. He gave me every little curly, frizzy, crazy hair on my head. He put there. And when I get to heaven, I will say, why did you do that? Can I not just have good hair? I've got other things going on. Good hair would have been a blessing to me. But I have to remind myself, at least I have hair. Because there has been a time where I have worried that all my hair was going to fall out. Hello, hormones and stress. Hi. So, good morning. Good morning. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, right? Okay, so getting right in because I want these to be shorter. I don't want to do an hour. I don't want to be, good morning, Jojo. Um, I don't want it to be uh, too long, 45 minutes. I'd like to keep these 20, 30 minutes a little bit, okay? Um, so, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so, anyway, let's get going. So why do we start with Elohim? Why did I want to start with that one? Why did Kay Arthur put it first in her book? Um, Lord, I want to know you. That was the book. Um, because what's the first verse of the Bible? Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. See, and I have, a new, I have a new prop. Jojo, you can't see it. Here's this. I have a new prop that Teresa made for me here. Um, Genesis 1.1 1, 1 says what? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So at the very beginning, when we first start reading about God, we see that he is the God that creates. That word that is used for that is Elohim, and that's E-L-O-H-I-M, Elohim. And it typically means God, like the God, God, Yahweh. It means that but, it, it, but every time any kind of creation is talked about, Elohim is the word that is used to describe the God that's doing that. This is that aspect of his character. This is that aspect of his character. That, remember we talked last week when I was giving y'all the, um, the lead up, I said, you know, we, these are just like little nicknames. Like I, different people know you by different names, right? It doesn't mean that you're any less of any one of them. Like there's a car commercial on right now. Um, I think it's for Kia. I don't know. See, it's not very effective because I don't remember the brand of the car, but I do remember this that because I was like, oh, that's exactly what I just talked about. That's hilarious. Um, because this guy is driving in his car and he picks up the phone and he's like, hello. And they're like, Jimmy. And it's all his friends who call him Jimmy. And then he pulls up to his girlfriend's house and he's like, mom, dad, this is James. So it's this guy driving this car and some, and some people call him James when he's serious and doing business. He's James. When he's meeting the in-laws, future in-laws maybe, he's James. When he's with his buddies or, or whatever, he's Jimmy. Same kind of thing. Okay, that's who God is. We're the same person, but sometimes we go by different names. So for creator, we know from the very beginning that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He is our creator. This book that, um, that actually John Few and Tommy Bridges are doing a podcast on this book called um, The Ragamuffin Gospel. That's a glare. See that ring right there? <laughs> the glare for Ragamuffin Gospel Brennan by Brennan Manning. Amazing. I, I have just really fallen in love with Brennan Manning's writing because he's so insightful and he is so authentic and real and it's just like a real person telling you great truths that are important to your life. So 
but John is doing this, and so they have talked a lot about this. But I was reading this just because John suggested it, and they're doing it. So I was reading it, and here, here's chapter 2. Like, I didn't even get very far. So it says that in Sir James John's, or Jean, what, I don't know, um, the famous British astronomer once said, the universe appears to have been designed by a pure mathematician. Okay, and this is what, what um, Mr. Manning goes on to say about it. Here's what he wrote next. The slant of the earth, for example, tilted at an angle of 23 degrees produces our seasons. Scientists tell us that if the earth had not been tilted exactly as it is, vapors from the oceans would move both north and south, piling up vast continents of ice. If the moon were only 50,000 miles away from earth instead of... 250,000, the tides might be so enormous that all continents would be submerged in water, even the mountains would be eroded. If the crust of the earth had been only 10 feet thicker, there would be no oxygen, and without it, all animal life would die. Had the oceans been a few feet deeper, carbon dioxide and oxygen would have been absorbed and no vegetable life would exist. The earth's weight has been estimated at six sextillion tons. That's a six... <laughs> with 21 zeros, didn't know that was a real number, yet it is perfectly balanced and turns easily on its axis, uh, axis, axis, it rotates daily at the rate of more than a thousand miles per hour or 25,000 miles each day. This adds up to nine million miles a year. Considering the tremendous weight of six sextillion tons rolling at this fantastic speed around an invisible axis, held in place by unseen bands of gravitation. The words of Job 26.7 take on unparalleled significance. He poised the earth on nothingness. The earth revolves in its own orbit around the sun, making the long elliptical circuit of about 600 million miles each year, which means we are traveling through space at 19 miles per second or about 68,000 miles per hour. Consider the sun. Every square yard of the sun's surface is emitting a constant energy level of 130,000 horsepower. That's approximately a 450 eight-cylinder automobile engines. In flames, the sun is in flames, that are being produced by an energy source much more powerful than coal. I'm almost done with this. It just, just fascinates me. The nine major planets in our solar system range in distance from the sun from 36 million to about 360, 300, oh, sorry, 3,664 million miles, yet each moves around the sun in, exact, in the exact precision with orbits ranging from 88 days for Mercury to 248 years for Pluto. Still, the sun is only one minor star among the 100 billion burning orbs that comprise our Milky Way. If if you were to hold out a dime at arm's length while gazing at the night sky, the coin would block out 15 million stars from your view if your eyes could see with that power. When we attempt to comprehend the almost countless stars and other heavenly bodies in our galaxy alone, we resonate to Isaiah's praise to the all-powerful creator. Lift your eyes and look. He who created these things, Elohim, leads out their army in order, summoning each of them by name. So mighty is his power, so great his strength that not one fails to answer. De creation discloses a power that baffles our mind and beggars our speech. I mean, we could end today right there. There you go. Elohim, that's what he created. Y'all, I can't. I couldn't even have written this because I, I could. I, I don't know those facts. I don't know that. Louis Giglio also has a fantastic sermon that I'm not sure. I can't remember if it was about creation or not. What the why he started it, but he tells this story, and and you can YouTube this. In fact, I, I encourage you to. It is about this. He because he holds up like a golf ball and tells you how many golf balls would fit on the earth. Okay, and I don't remember the number. But you can look at it, watch this sermon, Louis Giglio from Passion Church in Atlanta, and look up um, the laminin. I, I can't spell it. 
It's a protein that is in our body. I don't want to give it away. I don't want to give away the secret, but I'm going to. It's shaped like a cross. There is a, a something in our body, whatever it is, a protein, a, an atom, or whatever we got in us that make up our cells. I'm not a doctor, clearly, or a scientist, um, or even a good science student, for that matter. But here we go. The thing that holds us all together is shaped like this. Under the microscope, this is what it looks like. A cross. Fascinating, precious, precious sermon that Louis Giglio preached. Uh, and, I mean, it's been years ago. But so there's that. So when people tell you, hey, this just kind of happened, we just kind of moved in this direction, big bang, just kind of floated down into space and made it just so, no way, no way. For all those facts and figures that scientists have said, for all the research that has been done, no way. Because if it was just so, I mean, I guess you could say, well, we just, Earth ended up lucky. We're just the one that ended up with the, that being inhabitable so that people could be here. Okay, fine. But, but God created this. He created all of it. And then he looked at Earth and said, I'm going to put my people there. And, you know, I've created all this. I've created water. I've created land. I'm naming them as I go. I'm going to do all these things. This is what I want it to look like. Which, by the way, is supposed to be a representation of what heaven is like. It's supposed to be what heaven is like. Except better. It's not our old broken down earth we've got now. It's the original idea of the, you know. That's, that's, what we're, that's what his blueprint was. Where he is. So, you've got that. Hi, Mama. My Mama just came. Um, so, you've got that. He chose up. He chose this. And then he said, you know what? I'm going to add some more to it. I'm going to add some more. I'm going to make people who look like me. I'm going to create these things that look like me. I'm going to, they're going to be the image of me. Because Psalm 139 says that we are, it's like I said when I started with my hair, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are knit together in our mother's wombs. Oh, there's Aunt Judy. Hey, Aunt Judy. Uh, we are knit together in our mother's wombs. Knit. That doesn't just happen, people. There is no way. There is no way. I didn't know, you know, this just, I didn't know I was going to say this today, but here we go. There is no way. That once you even get past the fact that there are human beings that match together so that they can recreate life, <laughs> once you get past that, the actual medical things of all that happens to create life in that, in that body that God has already created, once you do that, all a manner of things can go wrong. All manner of things can go wrong. And the fact that it sometimes doesn't, what's the population of this earth? I don't even know. Is it billions? It's got to be billions. There are billions of people on this earth. That is not a mistake. That is not an accident. Even though some people will say, well, this baby was an accident. We weren't planning for this. My fourth one kind of, I mean, I wanted a fourth one. Jim didn't. He will tell you that. Um, he's still on the fence. No one tell Mac. Um, but you know what? God knew. He looked at us before we were knit together, before we were all those things. He looked at us. And said, okay, these two people over here, this is Jim Trotter and Emily, and we're going to, uh, they're going to end up together. And then when they come, they're going to have, 
these four children. They're going to have these four children, and here's their first one, and here's what he's going to be like, and here's what they're going to do. God bless them. He's going to teach them to be on their knees and to rely on me. Hey, Avery. He is going to be the one that does that, okay? Then I'm going to give them this one. So Jake Trotter is going to be next, and Jake is going to be this sweet child that is not going to bother them while they're having to deal with Bo. Sorry, I'm all up in y'all's face. We're, this is going to be Jake. Well, then we've got Van, because they're going to need some comic relief. So I'm going to give them Van. And then, last but not least, it's going to be a wait before him. It's going to be a little bit of a gap. But then Mac Trotter's going to come in, and he's going to be that precious angel thing that his mama's going to need to hold and to cuddle and to just eat up. That's going to walk around their house every single day and say, Mama, where are you? I'm right here, Mac. I love you, Mama. I love you, Mac. Thank you. He's going to be the affirmation and the encouragement to end up because she's got all these others. Because there are three of them are going to be teenagers at the same time. We're going to have him at the end to encourage. That is not a mistake. God created that. I don't know. I mean, I've said this before. If you are out, if you go outside, period. Go outside. You don't have to be somewhere magical or majestic to, to appreciate how beautiful the natural world is. It's amazing. Some of these flowers, I've got these, these I don't know what they are, but I really like them. I don't know the name of them. But my Uncle Jake, who is the, the plant guru and who makes my yard and my house look gorgeous from the road. He has no control over the inside. So it's not as pretty all the time. <laughs> but my yard always looks pretty good. He has planted these flowers for the pollinators because he knew I wanted butterflies and I love to watch the bees and, you know, I'm all about the pollinators. So he planted these plants just sporadically around my yard and, and right by my, my front, my back door where we all come in. And so I can look out and I can see all the, I've got hummingbirds. I've got all these little things, these, these little creatures fluffing around out there. But if you look at that little flower, I, I mean, that's amazing. That that many little creatures will come to this one tiny flower and eat off of it. That's amazing. There's no way that that just happens. As much as we hate mosquitoes, and I hate them, as much as we hate them, they serve a purpose. They're a good protein source for somebody. They're nourishment to something. Snakes, hate them. But without snakes, oh, I hate them. I mean, I'm, whew, it gives myself the chills. I hate snakes. But without them, we'd have rodents everywhere. They're going to eat some of those other things we don't like. It all gets eaten. All the stuff we don't like gets eaten by something else. <laughs> Y'all, I get tickled. <laughs> oh, I hope you're laughing with me. Because oh, that makes me feel better. <laughs> Does not apply to people. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it could, but it's pretty rare for us to be eaten by something, right? You're going to have to be all up in their business to be eaten by a lion or a wild cat or a shark so anyway we're all up in their business is why that happens and we might deserve it so because <laughs> now, now i'm thinking about <laughs> thank you judy for laughing oh, now i'm thinking about that facebook video where the woman's like the shark why are y'all surprised you in his house Teresa's laughing too. Oh, y'all. <laughs> That's that water God created. <laughs> Put that shark in it. See, there we go. There we go. It all ties back in together, right? So all of this has been created. All of it. We live here. We walk. We all serve a purpose for what we're doing, okay? So K. Arthur Here's another reference to her. She decided that she was going to look up the meaning of the word glory. In the Hebrew language, it means to give the correct opinion or estimate of. 
Can you see how awesome it is to know that you have been created for God's glory, that you live, that you are to live in such a way as to give all of creation a correct opinion or estimate of who God is? So we were created for a reason, that reason and that purpose, every, everything, everything. The purpose, the overall purpose of what you were created to do is to bring glory to God. And how you do that's going to vary. It's all going to be different for everyone, for every creature. I just told you the different reasons of the purpose of these little things we hate. It, it, we all are going to be different. We all, we've all got a job to do, whatever it might be. And it might be simple and it might not be, you know, whatever. Some of us are going to be, do more or more. It's not that anybody's more important, but some, some people get these big jobs that everyone knows and sees. Some of us have these small jobs. But we all have this purpose for what we were created to do and what, what, God wants us to accomplish for him. But above all, what we want, what he wants for us to do and what we're supposed to do is to bring him glory. And quite honestly, he doesn't really need our help. I love this in Job. Job 38. And I love the book of Job. It gets a bad rap because it is a lot of doom and gloom because you really feel sorry for Job. You really, really do. So Job, God has listened <laughs> for 37 chapters of Job and his friends. He's listened to them to say why it's so bad, what has happened. Job, this has happened because you've done something wrong. You have made God mad. <sighs> They've tried to tell him what he needs to do to correct it. On and on and on. 37 chapters, this has all gone on. And finally, chapter 38, verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm, and he said, Who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand who marked off its dimensions. Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Who, who set the cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness. When I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place. When I said, this far you may come and no farther... Here is where your proud waves halt. Y'all go back and read Job 38, the whole thing. I love how God says, I'm sorry, Job. You, let's, let's, let me refresh your memory. Were you a part of all of that? No, it happened before you were even around, okay? You were not part of that. So we got that. Now, let me tell y'all about Psalm 8. See, that's on this board. That's on the board. Psalm 8. This is, oh, and I just read that Job was from my NIV, okay? Um, and then I've got, this is the, y'all, the Warren Wearsby Study Bible. Awesome. Awesome. So good. Um, it's the, um, the New King James Version. So here's Psalm 8. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Who have set your glory above the heavens? Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, like he just told Job, I'm the one that told the ocean, you go here, you stop here. Don't you go any further. What is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him, for you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. 
O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Isn't that, I know that's a song, and I, I know Sandy Patty that sings, that, this, that sings it. That, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Y'all know that song? Now it's going to be in your head all day. Look it up. It's, 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 it's catchy. Um, but anyway, that's where that comes from. So there he is. He says, look, you've done all this. You've done all this, and yet you think so much of us, wrong Bible, you think so much of us that you're going to put us in the mix and you're going to think about us in the middle of it. <clears throat> Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hand. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. So he doesn't need us. He doesn't need my help. We, go, we see this. I, I just don't, I mean, we can walk out and be amazed. God does not need our help to, to show what he can do. He can work all on his own. But what did Psalm 8 say? Who am I that you think of me? You made all this. You don't need my help to be awesome. You don't need my help to show how mighty you are, how majestic is your name. You don't need my help. And David, the psalmist, says, Who am I that then you would consider me? Back to Psalm 138. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You knit me together. All my days have been ordained. You were created for that. Elohim, God. God, who set everything in order. We've just seen what happens when the oceans do not follow where they're supposed to stop. That is all in the forefront of our minds right now. When the clouds don't gather it up and stop. We have seen flooding recently. We have seen flooding. We have seen what happens when the oceans don't obey their boundaries. But God thought of us and said, I think the world needs an Emily. Here we go. Let's figure this out. This is what I'm going to set up. I want her to follow in this path and do this. I know y'all are thankful. Super thankful for that, right? Here's the thing. How long has it been? Oh, I'm, I am right on time, and I've even laughed for 10 minutes. Okay, so here we go. Here's the thing. When you think, if you, okay, so we're going to think about being the God who created everything, our creator, Elohim. So here's the God that's created everything. Okay? We know how great he is. Then we're going to think back that, okay, well, I know he created everything. In, and then for whatever reason, he decided that the world needed me. Okay? I have been knit together with a purpose, with something to do, with something to accomplish. All the while, I'm supposed to be bringing glory to the Lord. All the while, I'm supposed to be living this testimony and as a testament to who he is and how his goodness is. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be bringing okay when you get to that now keep all of that in mind when when we do this when you have a problem with something what do you do let's say like right now i have we have an ice maker in our kitchen that decided to leak we have hardwood floors it's now like this 
the kids are like, something's going on over here. And we're like, we know, we know. <laughs> well, what is it? The ice maker leaked. Why? We don't know. Who, what did we do? Well, we called the person that we bought it from and said, hey, um, can you, something's going on, can you come fix it? And they said, of course, yes. It's Daniel Appliance. We love them. Oh, they should sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ron. Um, so, they are going to come because that's where we got it. Now, but they have their technicians who are going to come to look at it and figure out what the issue is, they might have to call the manufacturer of who made it. These wonderful things that these people are watching this on, and me, even you guys too sitting in carpool on YouTube one day, you have this device, if it's Apple, you can call their help desk at any time and they can tell you what's wrong. Now, they might not be helpful but they're supposed to know the answers. That's where you got it. That's who you turn to. When you have a problem with something, you turn to the manufacturer, the creator of it, and you go, okay, this is going, it's making a weird sound. So my point is, when you have a problem, you need to call your manufacturer. You don't even have to pick up the phone. There won't be any wait time. There won't be annoying music that will get in your head. All you have to do is to start speaking. You will not get the Holy Spirit coming saying, please hold, the wait time is 10 minutes. A representative will be with you shortly. You're not going to get that. When you say, God, he says, yes. When we say, Elohim, why did you make me this way? I'm struggling with this. Why did you give me anxiety? Why did you create my body in this way? Why is my hair so frizzy? I just want to be pretty. I just want to look good. I just want this outfit to fit. Why are my children so bad? Ask him. He made it. And he might not, and he's going to say, you don't get it, but I did it for a reason. I know you don't understand this. I know you don't know why I did this, but one day you'll understand. Because I fully believe when I get to heaven, and I am going, when I get there, and I come to God, and I say, God, what, what, I need to know what this was about. He's going to say, Emily, here. Now, you see? You see? Okay. You didn't see that. You didn't know that was happening. And see, now you're here with me. This is even going to be cooler. Look, Emily, look. Okay, now here's where you died. Okay? This is where you left the earth, and now you're here with me. But, but look, what's happened since? You see? This had to happen so that that did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad hair, I know. But look, if that... Because of the bad hair, see? And once I get that broad view, I can say, oh, great. I hope in heaven when I'm perfect that I will go, yeah, oh, perfect. Whew. Thanks for letting me be a part of that. Awesome. Proud of myself there. I see now it makes sense. I hope. I hope I don't go. But really, the hair was that important? The hair needed to be like this for that? Oh. 
Okay. I can't argue with him because he made me. Just like we tell our children, why, Mom, why can't I do this? Because I said so. Why? Because I'm your mother. Because my body made your body. And that gives me a little bit of authority where you are concerned. You literally were a part of me. Don't do that. Doesn't all, that, that argument never works, by the way. Never. So today, and from now on, now that you've been told who Elohim is, since you now know, because once you know something, you have to, and I'm guilty of this too, so I'm preaching to myself here. Once you know something, you have to do it. You have to acknowledge it. From this moment on, Elohim created you. You are not a mistake. You are not a project gone awry. You are exactly who you were meant to be. You are exactly where the Lord knew you would be. And he is working this all out. Because of what? What does Romans 8 tell us? Let's look at Romans 8. There's somebody. Hey, good morning. So 8, Romans 8. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the first born among brothers. Don't, don't read into that more than what I'm... Don't, don't do it. Because verse 31 says, God is for us. Who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us. Oh, how will he not also along with him graciously give all things? So all these things, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. We have all been called according to his purpose to bring him glory, to work out what they're supposed to be doing. And all of it's going to be for good. It's all going to be for good whether we think it's good or not. It doesn't matter. Go knowing that. Look, I'm getting fired, wound up again. It's going to be longer than I want. Know that. You are a child of God. The creator of heaven and earth. Galaxies that we don't see. Can't number. I can't remember the, the, the scientific facts about you were created by that same God. Hold your head up. Live like it. See you next week. Thank y'all.